Hey y'all, Data Guy here. Um, and in response to some comments I've been seeing across my videos around, you know, hey, I want to break into data engineering. You know, I want to be a data engineer. And you know, you develop all these skills that might be relevant to data engineering. And you know, I have videos out there that'll tell you, hey, you know, develop Python and SQL skills and that's already known, but as a new graduate, if you don't have any job experience in the industry, it's pretty hard these days to get a job immediately as a data engineer. Um, you know, obviously, if you're an exceptional talent and more importantly, a really good interviewer, there's a chance. But typically, you're going to have to find another way into the data engineering industry. Um, you know, something like a data analyst is one example of these career paths. And I'm going to explore a few different career paths that you can use to, you know, really work, think of as guidelines for how you can get yourself get into data engineering as a new graduate with no data engineering job experience, but you know, those requisite skills in the data space and you know, that kind of general understanding, what jobs can you pursue right now, have a better chance of landing that'll set you up for a data engineering job a little bit down the road. So without further ado, let's get into it. Uh, if you like these videos, please like, subscribe, consider joining my Patreon. But Let's start out with our first type, uh, the first job that typically you know, will lead into a data engineering position, which is the data analyst role. Um, and this is typically a pretty low barrier to entry role. Uh, there's a lot of entry level positions historically very available, um, but these days you, know, you will definitely need to be very AI enabled to get one of these jobs because you know, AI is replacing a lot of those kind of grunt work manual functions that you know, we used to be really good uh, breaking endpoints in the industry, you know, things like data cleaning, you know, now doesn't necessarily need to be done by a human. Um, but generally, it's an easy <clears throat> area to get into because it doesn't really require a ton of knowledge around technical infrastructure, right? You know, here you're going to be doing more things like, you know, writing SQL queries for, you know, reporting, Python scripts for, you know, creating dashboards, visualizations, analyzing data to, you know, answer kind of business questions and basic data cleaning and preparation, um, which are really great skills and are really great responsibilities for developing, you know, more advanced SQL capabilities, more understanding of how data uh, understand understand or relates to data engineering um, and, you know, actually, you know, how it's providing value to the business um, and, you know, really exposing you to the first layer of, you know, data visualization tools, basic scripting, data quality assessment. And you're going to also need to be interacting with data engineers. Um, a lot of these skills are, you know, things that, hey, when you're a data engineer, you're on the other side, you're providing this data to the data analysts. Um, so, you know, you understand, hey, this is what data analysts want, which is why it's you know really good entry space in the field. Because hey, you go from data analyst, you say, hey, I need a data engineer that can build me these pipelines. Why don't I go build it myself? Um, and you know this is a great opportunity to learn a lot of these skills that you will then you know take further as a data engineer. <clears throat> and then this job also, especially you know if you're at a large organization, gives you a lot of opportunities to kind of reach out and volunteer for more of those kind of data pipeline automation projects that I just described, you know, getting involved in actually, you know, data infrastructure discussions. You can always go ask questions and figure out, hey, what do you guys use in the back end? Are there any roles in the data engineering team? Um, and also learn the stack that they're using behind the scenes to provide you that data, you know, things like DBT, Airflow, um, you know, learning containerization, you know, if you want to maybe run small web apps or containerize your own dashboards, right? Um, kind of some of those beginner level, you know, CI, CD, DevOps practices um, are also really good opportunity to, you know, implement some kind of best practices from, you know, the big leagues down in this role to prove, hey, I'm ready to make that jump to a data engineer. So that's one option. Now, the next option I want to talk about is going from software engineer to data engineer. Um, and this is another really common option because, you know, as a software engineer, you have a really strong programming foundation. You're familiar with development best practices. You're very familiar with how to write and code and maintain uh, your own, you know, code and containerize it, run that in production settings, which are a lot of the same things you're doing as a data engineer just for different use cases, right? Um, and data engineering, you know, is effectively a subset of software engineering um, and inherits a lot of its best practices and you know structure from what software engineers do. Um, and here, you know, a lot of the key responsibilities you have as a software engineer, you know, things like application development, <coughs> API creation, integration, database design, optimization, you know, system architecture, 
understanding how different you know tools and systems and containers relate to each other, um, and you know, obviously the skills you develop in that kind of role where you're you know doing a lot of programming, designing those systems, you have to follow DevOps practices, if, especially if you're at any kind of large company. Um, database management, understanding how you know to safely and you know responsibly and efficiently store data, uh, develop APIs and work with APIs. And here, you know, you take those skills, and there are a lot of the same things you're doing as a data engineer, right? And so, really, the way to transition from a software engineer to a data engineer is, you know, focusing more on hey, understanding data processing frameworks and focusing on more data-related products, more data-intensive projects, um, and you know, getting to understand the data, you know, data warehouse concepts, you know, going deeper a layer in the back end than you might have, you know, previously gone to understand hey, what's really happening in these back end systems, if that's something that truly excites you um, and then going into those systems um, and you know saying hey I'm going to figure out how to optimize this. I'm going to figure out how to optimize something like a query, um, you know, so because that's something you're be doing a lot of as a data engineer. Um, and then also the distributed systems knowledge from you know doing software deployment and production is also very applicable um, for data engineering. Um, so a lot of really you know cross applicable skills and a lot of easy transition opportunities typically from this kind of role. Now, the next kind of data career path I want to talk about is a little bit later and lesser known and, you know, something that especially nowadays is data admins are, you know, kind of going out of the industry is, is a bit harder to get a new, but it's also something where if you're already a data admin transitioning into a data engineering role or, you know, database reliability engineer, these are really great roles um, for, you know, taking that deep database knowledge, understanding a data storage and performance, um, and then, you know, taking that to, hey, now I'm going to orchestrate this and, you know, learn how systems interact with the databases that I've been managing it, so, and then learn how to orchestrate those systems. Because you know so much around how databases work, you're able to work with them really efficiently, right? And, you know, a lot of those key responsibilities of database performance optimization, you know, setting backup recovery procedures, implementing secure pipelines uh, for data, and, you know, secure storage of data as well, um, and, you know, capacity planning and the distributed systems that go along with managing modern data warehouses are really cross applicable to data engineering. And you'll also, you know, have a lot of those skills ready to go and, you know, for when you want to transition over there and you're still going to use them, right? You know, that deep, you're going to have deep SQL knowledge. That's what you're doing as a data engineer. Um, you know, if you're storing data or, you know, managing data pipelines at a large enterprise, you need to be doing those really high performance and really high security, right? Um, and so, you know, some good ways to transition from, you know, kind of, hey, purely back end into the data engineer or pipelines area is, you know, learning program more, you know, data engineering focused programming languages like Python, uh, Java, understanding more big data technologies and how data gets processed, since that's typically just something you may not have a lot of exposure to, um, is you know, how something like Spark works. Um, also cloud platform experience, making sure you're understanding you know, how modern cloud platforming platforms work, you know, the different tools in a modern cloud stack, uh, because you'll, you'll need to know that for any company these days. Um, and then obviously workflow orchestration tools and you know, studying data pipeline concepts and you know, not only understanding how you know, data is stored, but also how data gets transformed and manipulated and used um, outside the context of it, just a database. Now, the final kind of career transition path I want to talk about is another probably lesser known one and one you might not instinctively think about, um, but it's actually going from DevOps engineer to data engineer. And that's because there is really a lot of kind of cross compatibility and you know, usage of the same tools between DevOps and data ops. Um, you know, both are very infrastructure and automation focused. They both require extensive cloud experience. Um, you know, as a DevOps engineer, you're going to have a lot of responsibility around, you know, hey, how do you automate the deployment and management of infrastructure, building CI CD pipelines, um, you know, cloud platform management, and also monitoring and alerting on all those different systems. Um, and, you know, the skills you develop there, hey, you know, you're going to be doing, learning how to do things like infrastructure as code orchestrating containers, um, just how you'd be orchestrating workflows as a data engineer, um, and, you know, doing things like automation scripting, those are all really relevant skills in data engineering as well. Um, and so, you know, a really great way to transition from the DevOps side of it to more data ops is, you know, learning, hey, 
get at the missing pieces like data processing technologies, how to manage it and, you know, build pipelines around those and understanding, you know, data warehousing concepts, right? How data gets stored. That's, you know, typically a blind spot for a DevOps engineer. Um, and then understanding, you know, hey, how, what are the typical ETL, ELT patterns relating to, you know, how you were building, you know, containerization workflows, right? And container orchestration, you're just straining data now um, and you know just get familiar with data specific tools and you know learning things like SQL and data modeling will really help you close that gap and make that transition where you know you have a lot of the skills you just got to add a little bit more of the data piece um, so those are just a few uh, different career paths I want to talk about for you know how you get from hey someone who's on the DevOps side of things or on side of things or software engineering or you know you're a new grad and you want to break into the data engineering Choose one of these paths if you can't get a job in data engineering, and within two years, you should be able to transition into a more data engineering focused role. That's what you still want to do. Maybe you'll fall in love with one of these instead. Um, but I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it helps you out, um, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Data guy out.